Hi, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week and Happy New Year! We're finally in the year 2023 and I hope you've all had a great end of the year and well rested and ready for New Year's adventure! Let's get right into drama and filmland news. This week is gonna be mostly filmland news because this is also Chinese New Year's month and Chinese cinema is literally dying, <laughs> starving. Cinema's film industry is like on the brink of so they need money, okay? They're desperate. First though, let's talk about a couple of things about dramas. Number one, there was actually a drama that started shooting at the very end of last year that I forgot to mention last time called Xiangqing Zhanzhu Bie Pao. <laughs> it's like speed dating, stop. Don't run away. It doesn't have an official English title yet on drama list and it's based on a novel led by Chen Yuqi and Fang Yilun. As the title suggests, it's a contemporary romantic drama led by these two people and they meet when they are at arranged dating, usually happening when your parents <laughs> or relatives arrange you and you meet and that type of thing. This thing started shooting on the 28th in Wuxi and it's contemporary drama so probably it's gonna shoot for like two months. We're likely to see it if nothing went wrong closer to the third, fourth quarter of 2023. Then a drama I've mentioned two weeks ago called Feng Yue Jingnang, a period drama under the moonlight set in Ming Dynasty about a woman dressed up as a guy working at the county magistrate. The story has started to promote officially releasing character posters. This is the project led by Hu Bingqing and Zhai Zi Lu and made by Tang Ren, <laughs> the ones standing on top of Chinese drama land companies. Let's see if this drama can bring it back to its olden days glory or just help it on the way of climb a little bit. The costumes look pretty nice and beyond my expectation of what this type of drama would do. It does look like it has done some research on the actual Min Dynasty historical costumes. I say about 80 to 70% of the look of things are based on real historical things. But there's still definitely an element of um, drama's own interpretation and artistic design and styling and cutting to fit more of our current contemporary aesthetics. But overall it looks much better than I expected. It's the costume that intrigued me a little bit more than other things about this project and I do hope at least I'll do a couple of really really good historically recreated costumes in this drama. Then there's another thing that happened to the drama which is really funny. Okay, it's nothing significant uh, and it didn't blow up on internet but I just happened to catch it and it's a bit ridiculous. That is to do with the short drama 12 episodes, Hui Lai de Nu Are Homesick, that has finished airing on IT and I will talk about it later. The funny thing about this project is <laughs> during this week, people actually dug out during this drama's ending credits, there's a section of the names that are faked. They're not real people's names. And it's sandwiched between a group of looking like real human names and a group of real hu human names in between. There's a section of names that are completely made up. The reason being, if you go on the Chinese search engine and search things such as uh, how do I name my baby? How do I name my novel characters? Good girl's name, boy's name, made up names? You can actually come up with certain websites that will have lump sum of like those type of fake names. And they basically found out that whole section of names are actually copied from one of those websites in the exact same order. And it's all two character names. Two character names only works in China if the first character is a surname. So you usually have a surname and then two characters as your given name or one character. So making it together, you either have a three character names or two. That's the most common versions you have in China. So if you have two character names, the first one needs to be a surname. But if you look at those sections of names, all right, none of the first characters is actually a surname. And it's not in real human names, basically. <laughs> And it's exact same order as those websites would have it. So people are speculating basically there's something to do with accounting, bookkeeping, invoices and faking presences of people who do not exist so that you can... <laughs> so I mean that seems to be the most logical reason why anyone would bother to do that type of things but who knows. It's not a huge thing. It's not a hugely popular drama and I don't think anybody is gonna really pursue it to the end but it's just funny. Basically, everybody's making dramas for reasons other than that they want to make dramas. Current state of Chinese drama land, beautiful. So these are a couple of uh, drama related news. We are, after all, in the first week of this year and three days of that is 
official holiday in China, so people are not working that hard. Then we have quite a few news regarding films that are gonna go into Chinese cinema right on the Chinese New Year's Day, which would be January the 22nd this year. It's gonna go into cinema on the day the most competitive and most likely to get most <laughs> box office slot of the year. Previously, I've already mentioned two films that have been scheduled for this period of time, which is the Liu Lang Di Qiu R. Wandering Earth 2, the sequel to the first one and the most successful domestically produced sci-fi movie ever in China. The other one is the Man Jiang Hong Full River Red I've talked about last week, directed by Zhang Himo, period setting espionage film. Then this week we've had four films that have announced that are gonna go into cinema also on the day. Bloodbath of Chinese cinema. And there are a couple of projects that are pretty interesting. Some of them you probably have already heard quite a few times. Number one is the, for my audiences, I believe a lot of you are really anticipating this one. Wu Ming, Hidden Blade, the Mingguo setting espionage film led by Liang Chaowei and Wang Yibo, also featuring Wang Chuanjing and many other famous stars. It has released a teaser trailer before and it's a <laughs> really like a black comedy snippet of two people disposing a body on the uh, shore. I'm thinking closer to 21st, 22nd, we're gonna see more trailers releasing. I would love to see it, but I don't think it's gonna show here where I am. The next one is a comedy that has just started promoting two days ago called Jiao Huan Ren Sheng, literally meaning switching life. English title 500 miles. And it's a comedy led by Lei Jiaying and Zhang Xiaofei, plus many other famous people and this story is about a young guy who gets this weird equipment like a printer that he makes a wish and the printer will print something out and he can turn into that thing <laughs> okay so he turns into a guy that he wants to be because he wants to be that guy's girlfriend's boyfriend you know like he wants to be basically that guy to date that girl so he becomes that guy but then that messes up everything that type of comedy definitely a very suitable type of film for the festivity spirit of the chinese spring festival then we also have a sports themed film that has only just started promoting yesterday called Zhongguo Ping Pang. My channel's audience is probably, even if I don't type out the English title, you know what it is. China, Zhongguo, Ping Pang, table tennis. Literally, that's what it is. It is about Chinese table tennis and more specifically focused on 1990s, where it is the turning point of Chinese Ping Pong from it's not so sort of doing well and kind of a, at a valley time to boom ever since then has become the type of uh, <laughs> domestic competition is harder than international type of sports for Chinese sportsmen. And this film is directed by Yu Bai Mei and he is collaborating with his old collaborator Deng Chao who also leads this film. So it has two directors, Deng Chao and Yu Bai Mei. Also Deng Chao is the lead actor. Also Sun Li is the lead actress. So it's like a husband and wife team making this film. Plus it will also feature Xu Weizhou who also has been playing other table tennis stuff before. The one with Bai Jingting if you've watched that drama before. So this is like a um, worked out team doing a very familiar theme thing in Chinese cinema and drama land. Let's see how well this one is gonna do. Then we have another animation film. Among all the films that we're talking about today, probably this one and The Wandering Earth 2 would be the things that you would want to watch on a big screen. The other type of stories can do with smaller screens, but this one, definitely IMAX would be great. Deep Sea, Shanghai. This is done by the director Tian Xiaopeng, who did Monkey King, Hero is Back, back in 2015. And that film was really successful. And that was what we consider today as the first Chinese animation film in recent years that have started a new, almost a round of revitalization, let's say, of Chinese animation, 3D animation. And this guy has been working in the past seven years for this project called Deep Sea, it's filled with colors. If you look at the trailer posters, it's very technicolor, very visually just shockingly pretty. And it does have top notch CGI that we have these days because it renders a lot of water and water is hard to render. If you know about that, you know it's hard. A lot of people have been waiting for this film for a long time and finally it's gonna go into cinema in Chinese uh, spring festival slot. This film would also include a lot of creatures. It also has a lot of otters. Oh, they're so adorable. Uh, animated otters, I, I, like real otters, I cannot help. Scream. <laughs> 
at the side of them. So I can't imagine when they can talk how cute that's gonna be. Fingers crossed the story is good enough. So that's everything about this week. Not that much is going on, but we will hear more stuff as we move closer to Chinese New Year. My worry about this year's Spring Festival slot is now that COVID is mm -hmm in China and it's open policy, right? And we are heading into Chunyun, which is Spring Festival transportation peak. Hundreds of millions of people are gonna go on high-speed rail, going into everywhere from everywhere in China and just having all the different types of COVID <laughs> virus mixed in this big pot. And it's likely that during Chinese New Year, a lot of people are gonna get sick. So when they're all coughing and having a fever, <laughs> how many people would actually bring themselves to a cinema to watch a film? And then we have that many films competing against each other. And this year, 21st this month would be Chinese New Year's Eve, 22nd would be the first day, and that will be the year of rabbit and bunny. If you like rabbit, I know a couple of my audiences, you are a huge rabbit lover. You know who you are, okay, I'm talking about you. Well, it's the year of your pet. I hope you have a great year of the rabbit. I will also make a couple of things in my shop that's rabbit related for the new year because they're so adorable, easy to draw. Next year is dragon. <laughs> that's not very easy for any uh, drawing thing because they have too many elements. So for this month live stream, I will do it on the day, Chinese New Year's Eve. That will be the 21st, that will be two weeks from now, Saturday. And for that week, I will switch the weekly report and the live stream so that um, the weekly reporter will happen probably a day before, on Friday. And then on Saturday, I'll be live <laughs> on a Saturday live stream. So probably more people can join in that um, you're not working on the day. And then it's the actual Chinese New Year's Eve. We shall see what we can do on that day for fun. Please take care. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.